Good day, players, and welcome to a fun astronomy class with Master Ogiwon. Today, we are gonna dive into astrobiology and the search of extraterrestrial life. And so, long has been speculated what life can harbor different planets that we can observe, or exoplanets, recently. Now let's see what secrets lies ahead. We have in our virtual spaceship 16, actually these are 18 rockets, which have been supplied with the taxes of the population. And we have to find 10 life forms, possible life forms. It is not confirmed yet, so calm down. <laughs> All right, what we have here? We have our sun, and there are a few planets that are going around this star, our sun. Let's check it, just in case. It says stars are not known to support ordinary life. All right, we have a few gas giants, three of them, there is one more, but there is no space here. <laughs> and they have a few satellites, so I will begin with the planets from the solar system. Let's check Venus. And Venus is what? Venus surface is extremely hostile, but its upper atmosphere has more temperate conditions. Aerial microbiology microbial life could potentially survive in the acidic cloud layers. Mm. Good stuff. We find we found one life form. Let's find more. I don't think Mercury has life, but let's check. We have plenty of rockets for now. No sign, no signs of life so far. All right. Now let's check Mars. I'm sure there is possible life. Yep. And what is that? Possible life. Microbial life on Mars. Mm. Mars has evidence of past liquid water and current subsurface ice. Yes, it has an ice cap. Microbial life could exist or have existed in underground aquifers, where it is shielded from harsh surface conditions. Mm. All right, let's check one gas giant. No sign of life, but there are speculations that life can exist on gas giants. None in our gas giants, that is. Okay, you probably can have uh, something, but let's go to Europe. Yes, there should be light here. Possible life. <laughs> right, possible life. Extremophiles on Europe. Beneath its icy crust, Europe likely harbors a subsurface ocean kept warm by tidal heating. Mm. Extremophiles similar to those found in Earth's deep hydrothermal vents could thrive there. Mm -hmm. Yes, we found three life forms so far. What is that? This is Ganymede. These moons are big. Check me. Nothing there. Alright, I'm pretty sure there is possible life on Enceladus. Enceladus. Yes, what is that? This is subsurface life on Enceladus. Possible life. Enceladus has 
gazers that spew water vapor and organic compounds from a subsurface ocean. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We swim in oceans. This environmental, this environment could support microbial or even simple multicellular life forms. Yay! Okay, then we have Dion and Rhea. These are moons of Saturn. And we have Titan. Titan is rumored to have life. What is that there? Ah, this is possible life. Methane based life. <coughs> ah, sorry. On Titan. Titan has like le ah, lakes. Titan has lakes and rivers of liquid methane and ethan. Ethan. Hypothetical life forms could use methane as a solvent for biochemical reactions similar to water-based life forms on Earth. Wow. Okay, we continue. Uh, this is Iapetus, Iapet, moon of, it says, moon of Saturn. Okay, I will not check this. Let's go to the exoplanets. Now, this is a lot of uh, speculations here, but let's see. This is Kepler-22. It is a yellow dwarf star, and it is known to have one exoplanet. Kepler-22b. To be or not to be. And actually, there is possible aquatic life located in the habitable zone of its star. Kepler 22b could have a vast ocean where aquatic life form similar to Earth's marine organisms might exist. How nice! And here we have this strange rogue planet. Rogue planets are not orbiting. Uh, any star, or they orbit a few stars. <laughs> because they may be captured for a while, or something like that. Let's check it. What we have here? <sighs> here we have possible life, silicon-based life on a rogue planet. A rogue planet drifting through space could have geothermal activity providing heat. Silicon-based life forms might exist in high temperature environments deep within the planet. Mm. All right. Okay, my rockets are going out. Now, uh, this, the next star is Gliese 581. This is a red dwarf star. I will not send probe there. But I know there is at least one habitable planet here. Possible habitable. Let's check F, one, it will F. No, it's not here, so it's here. There we are. What we found? Ammonia-based life on Gliese 581G. Gliese 581G is a potentially habitable planet. Ammonia-based life, which might operate at lower temperatures, could potentially exist if the planet has an ammonia-rich environment. Okay, and we are going to Proxima Centauri. It's a red dwarf star. It has two planets, but one of them is Neptunian-like object, and I think this is Proxima C. So. Proxima Centauri B should contain some possible life forms. Ah, yes. Uh, photosynthetic organisms on Proxima Centauri B. It is in the habitable zone of the star, Proxima Centauri. Photosynthetic organisms could exist on its surface, assuming it, assuming it has a suitable atmosphere and liquid water. If it and there is one more planet. It should be one habitable Trappist planet. Ah, this Trappist star system. It is becoming so, so popular. 
Let's check traps to one. Four more pockets. Nothing on Trappist 2. Let's check Trappist. Uh, actually, this is 1B, 1F. Nothing there. And there should be. My last rocket. Alright. <laughs> and we found 10 possible alien li life forms in stars that are around us. Uh, microbial life, extremo fields, uh, microbes, surf subsurface life, photosynthetic organisms, dismethane based creatures, silicon based creatures, good pets. <laughs> Alright, and uh, finally there is that out that both variants if we are alone in the universe and we are not alone in the universe are actually equally insane think about it class dismissed and master ogiwon out